Hello everybody and thank you so much for spending time with me today again on Interviews, where we meet the people behind the businesses in South Africa. And today I'm chatting with Lou Portgieter. Lou, will you please tell us a little bit more about what you do and why you do it? Hi Melanie, thank you for having me on this interview. Um, and hi to everybody out there. Um, like Mel Melody mentioned, my name is Lou Potheter and I own the company called Color Cove. We specialize in resin casting, um, especially towards uh, educating and training new artists uh, uh, on the craft of resin casting. And that's what we do. We host okay. uh, various uh, different techniques and classes uh, in various locations in, in the country. Okay, and um, how long have you been doing this for? Um, I've been doing resin costing for almost, I would say almost about 14 to 15 months now. Um, so okay. I'm fairly new. Um, however, my journey started um, through working with, for another company and uh, that wanted to manufacture these uh, dining room tables with resin. And within the first four to five weeks, um, we scrapped um, five coffee tables because the resin that we purchased was not suitable for making rubber tables. And so expedited my link journey because I had to actively climb in and do all this research about what resins is, uh, you know, good for what applications. And um, my knowledge even stretches to, you know, up into the chemical structures in the formulations of resins. And okay. so that expedited my, my experience and my, my journey. Okay, that's very interesting. So what were you doing before this? Yes. Um, I'm an ultrasound technician by trade, um, okay. and so it's similar technology as what we use for um, um, sonars, for uh, um, ultrasound sonars for testing babies. However, we do that on uh, mechanical parts, on you know, petrical plants or power stations, and okay. to test if these parts in the action pack have a, um, a defect in them and can cause uh, loss in production time and costs. Okay, so, so it's a very technical trade, and this tech, I'm a very technical person. This also okay. translates into my business because my understanding of resin costing um, comes from a very technical perspective, okay. which is not necessarily required for you know certain te techniques within resin costing. Okay. Okay, but I can see how if you're making really big pieces like dining room tables that it kind of starts to become a safety aspect that, that they don't fall apart. Yes. Yes, Melanie, to be honest, there's a couple of um, misperceptions on the market. Um, and that is one, uh, that all resins can be used for all applications. Um, okay. That is simply not true. Uh, resin, um, first of all, you get various types of resins and epoxies. Um, but within the costing uh, epoxy range, uh, you get different formulations for different applications. Okay. And so my example to my clients is of, often very simple. Um, you cannot use swimming pool resin or fiberglass resin to cost a dining room table with um, yes. because it will simply uh, boil, boil out on you. And so um, that's one of the mis misperceptions on the market. Um, okay. And so that is what our focus is, to, is to educate um, people on, uh, you know, on those principles uh, and the misperceptions um, because it, it costs uh, companies a lot of money uh, and people. I mean, individuals that think they want to take this craft on into their, uh, you know, their woodworking business. And so um, we try to educate and provide the right information out there because, um, I've seen a lot, I've spoken to many artists the last year, and I've seen that everyone, everybody, uh, those that is the best in the country um, in our crafts um, went through this pain period where they lost a lot of money by testing, the, uh, testing many resins to get the perfect resin for their technique. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting that you, uh, 
that you say that because um, I was some years ago trying to make a stamp using a resin molded process. And um, I remember yeah. back then it was very bewildering because there was surprisingly a lot of stuff available on the market when I started looking. But then understanding yeah. which was the correct one to use became, became very complicated. Yes, our aim, one of our core values is to teach you how to read a data sheet, which every uh, res brand of resin should have. Actually, in actual fact, I always tell my clients that every chemical in the world is supposed to have a data sheet, even your dishwash liquid, um, yes. uh, which you will most probably be able to download from the manufacturer's website. Um, okay. And so our aim is to read to, to, do, um, to teach you how to uh, read your data sheet um, and also understand it so that um, you can go online and purchase uh, any resin from anywhere in the world and know that this resin will be good for your application. Okay, okay. That's an amazing service to offer. Yeah. So are most of your Thank customers you so <laughs> uh, people who work with wood? Uh, no, um, it's a funny thing how uh, everything turned out. Uh, we started hosting a coffee river table class where you pour your own coffee river table. It is our technical class because we specifically marketed it to people that um, to bring it in as part of, as part of their woodworking com uh, company. However, when we started hosting the classes, and marketing it, our audience uh, customer base was split 50-50 between people who wanted to just make a nice table for themselves and also um, then the people on the craft for business opportunities. Mm. And so um, by now we've got classes and different techniques. Um, we also make use of uh, resident artists, uh, you know, that is good at a specific technique. Um, and so it's now uh, split 50 between people who want to have a break from home and people who want to just, you know, uh, make a nice out of home, people who will take the craft on for, uh, for business purposes. Mm -hmm. And where are your, where is your training kind of, studio? Uh, so we don't have a specific training studio. We currently work with, um, we have a, a venue in Kailami in Joburg um, okay. that we host classes at. We also host classes in Vereniging, um, which is in the south of Gauteng, um, at a, woodwork, uh, a local woodwork shop. And then uh, we do also host classes at other businesses like Micah Hardware in Nelspreet okay. in Mbumalanga. Okay. So okay. we try to we try to keep our venues a little bit fluid um, according to the demand of you know of uh, of customers. Um, and so we might, in actual fact, have new <laughs> venues next year because we've been requested by a, a couple of different uh, companies to come and host our our classes at mm -hmm. you know at their companies, mm -hmm. um, art stores and those type of places. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know, like for, for a long time you didn't see resin art and now suddenly it seems to be everywhere. Yes. Um, um, that's is it trending at the moment? Yes. So the international market is about six to seven, maybe eight years old. Um, and uh, the funny thing is uh, every six to 12, you can say every six to eight months, a new technique launches on the international market. Um, and so, um, but we are the, the artists that are found, uh, you know, is the best in the craft has been doing it for about three years. Um, and so everybody else has been jumping on the trend about in the last 12 months. So okay. our market is fairly new. Um, it is a very shaky time in the market, according to myself, uh, for the reason that um, a lot of people now realize they can make money out of resin costing. And so you get a lot of people that jump, jumps on the opportunity and they just randomly bring in resins or supply resins that it might not necessarily be tested properly, or they purchase from one of the big manufacturers and relabel and rebrand. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, but you know so um i see a lot of new brands launching every single month um however i i do assume that we will also see a drop in a lot of brands over the next 12 months to a year um because there's a lot of risk involved with retailing reason what are those risks <laughs> Melanie, um, anonymous perception in, um, in, on, on resin in general is that um, there's a perfect resin out there, okay? And that is simply not true. Every single resin um, has its own limits, okay? So you might find a resin that doesn't give you a lot of bubbles, okay? But it yellows very easily, okay? You might find a resin that, um, you know, that's, maybe crystal clear and doesn't yellow but then um you know it's very soft and bendable when it tears um so um and and that's minor things um um your resin what happens with resin is when you cast um sorry when you mix your resin and you harden it together there's a heating effect that takes place um and this heating effect can cause your resin to overheat okay. which will cause various types of uh, adverse effects and um, and then you cannot do anything with that solid hard beard uh, piece of resin. The problem is that those um, those that overheating effect is highly vol uh, re um, sorry highly vol uh, sorry, volatile um, is volatile but also um, in correlation with with room temperatures okay so if your room is hotter than normal room temperature which is around 23 to 25 degrees celsius for us um, then your resin can speed up the heating effect um, faster uh, and it can overheat okay if in actual fact your room temperature is too cold um, then it can cause your resin to take longer to cure okay so um, what I found is because resin is fairly new to South Africa, um, people in general don't understand these principles. And so um, it is risky to set out a resin uh, for retail um, that you can, that you have not tested yourself properly. Um, and because people do not understand, you know, um, that they need to test the resin and know the resin's limits um, to be able to work with it properly. And so the risk is always that you will find a client that will come back to you and complain that your resin couldn't um, couldn't do what you said, um, or just they don't they ignore the data sheets that is supposed to state these limits. Um, and so um, and and then you have a lot of backlash. But other than that, Melanie, for me, it's not about backlash. It's about being responsible to your customers enough. To not potentially harm them by having them lose money, or um, you know, and and you know, to help them always with their journey and help them to understand these limits and and you know, not cause them pain. <laughs> so um, so that's one of the reasons I feel that um, we might see a lot of brands dropping in the next twelve months to two years because. Um, because I don't, it's it's risky. It's really risky to um, just retail resin, and uh, you know, uh, think that things might not happen. You know, <laughs> it sounds to me it like a risk mean. I don't want to take. <laughs> um, Melanie, uh, one of the things I'm open and transparent about is um, I work with a lot of resin each month. Um, like I mentioned. Uh, on uh, one of the comments that uh, on the group uh, when I introduced myself as we cost it uh, above 70 coffee tables in our classes uh, in the last five months okay um, and so I'm I'm fairly very comfortable with costing resin and I understand formulations and the cause and effect of various things in uh, formulations However, I'm always transparent about even even me. I still make mistakes on a daily basis, just like any other rookie, um, because I did not think the process clear uh, through clearly. Or I don't know. You know, when you do art, <laughs> you get sidetracked and you Absolutely. think, okay, this is going to work, and the next moment you do it, and it just <laughs> it it just doesn't work. You know, and so. Um, 
but I do always say that me making mistakes is good for my community and my audience, and my customers, because I can tell them what not to do. At yes. Least, you know. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I've got a couple of. Um, I actually have a couple of uh, flops uh, that you know when I flop something, I keep it as samples so that I can show my customers. Oh, that's wonderful. That's that's a wonderful yeah. way of, of, of showing. And and for me, I also feel the same way. If you go into an art class and everything's made perfectly, then yeah. the next time you're doing something on your own at home and, and it flops, then you don't really understand why. Yeah. Whereas if you've exactly. gone through that process with a teacher, then uh, it can be very helpful. Yes, um, I fully agree with you. And I think that is one of the things I find with um, with my customers is, um, and in general in our commu community, and this is also a pro problem on the global market, sorry, um, is that people tend to come into the craft and not do their research first. And they come with, um, come with ex expectations mm. that will surely be not be met within the <laughs> within the first couple tries you know mm. um like i mentioned before uh, the artists in the country that i know that uh, is definitely the best at the craft has been doing it for over a year to three years you know mm. and they've paid a lot of hard uh, a lot of school fees and had a lot of heartache and pain mm. and mm. so that is what our focus is is to help new artists, you know, go through the process with a little bit less pain. However, <laughs> um, from, from, from a customer perspective, if you're not going to uh, pay attention, um, mm. uh, then you will definitely not, uh, you know, um, then you will experience that pain. Mm. These are some fabulous insights. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Now, what do people mostly make using your resins? What kind of items other than coffee tables can you make with the resins? Um, okay, so jewelry, um, wall art, uh, we call it the resin pouring technique. Um, it's very similar to acrylic pouring. Ever, um, acrylic pouring does not allow you to obtain a 3d effect right um the thing because resin is transparent um you can do layer upon layer upon layer which will then give you the 3D effect um which is amazing so it's a, like a advanced form of thing. and 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 then of course a lot of painter. <laughs> um but um so uh with the acrylic pouring technique, you can almost do anything with it. Um, so we have a side table class where you do the acrylic pouring technique on your side table. Um, we have a wall art class where you do a nice canvas um, and then obviously our coffee river tables. Okay. Um, so other than that, on the, inter on the international market, there is a, um, a separate uh, um, a separate uh, technique which have not been done in South Africa um, as yet. Um, well, not on a on a large scale. There's only one person in South Africa that I know of that has done it, um, mm. and that is countertop uh, countertop epoxy. So you can go into any existing um, home and redo your countertops to make it look like marble or granite or even artistic effects um, and oh. so that's really not been ventured into and um, in South Africa and uh, nobody has done that as yet well only one person like I mentioned <laughs> okay okay so it sounds as though it's still quite a young art and and we're still finding out what where it's going to go yes very young in actual fact um, and uh, yeah uh, there's various things you can do with it. Um, one of the things I found in the last couple of weeks, um, we our our art forms um, is mostly done with uh, silicone molds. Okay, and so one of the things I found in the last couple of weeks is that um, there's only a limited range of silicone molds out on the market, which is more your general molds. And so I think in the in the future, in the next couple of years. We're going to see, you know, a lot of new designs coming out um, 
which will allow us to, um, sorry, Melanie, my, there's a notification that came up. Um, just want to remove it. Sorry. Um, so we will definitely see a lot of new things coming up in the next couple of months. Also, like I mentioned, um, the international market has a new technique every six to 12 months. Um, to give you an example, um, last year, December, um, everybody in America was doing uh, these traveling mugs, uh, you know, the tumblers, um, mm. because it's winter for them. So they take those tumblers and they decorate it with resin and glitter and stickers and they make the most amazing tumblers. In, um, and then about March this year, um, everybody started doing what we call freeform resin casting. So what you do is you cast your resin in layers, um, fin finish layers, um, and then you wait for it to be not sticky anymore, but still soft and bendable. Once it's not sticky and bendable, you can then mold that piece of resin, um, that sheet of resin into anything you would like. So what people do is they will um, uh, bend it over a vase or even, I've even seen a lady that makes, um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, plates and bowls out of it. Um, and so that's what we call freeform resin casting. Um, again, oh. nobody in South Africa is really doing it um or ha not that i know of um I, I have some i have seen a couple of it but not somebody that really went into that technique and you know um is only doing that so we have a lot of exciting things to come in this in this craft it sounds fascinating it sounds fascinating so the chemicals yeah. that they're using that they're producing for these reasons are pretty new um, I won't say so. Um, resin, okay. in actual fact, and epoxy has been on the market for a very long time. Uh, one of the only two brands that we use um, is imported from the UK. However, um, it is um, was formulated in California and the company is owned by two Californian brothers. And they initially started um, the company uh, to manufacture costing epoxy for surfboarding. Um, okay. And so this, comp this, this specific brand of resin um, is mostly sold in South Africa to the surfboarding community okay. because South, Af South Africa has the second largest surfboarding, uh, surfboard manufacturing community in the world. Um, I think wow. Australia is the only other, other community that um, you know, is, you know, is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. So, um, so epoxy has been around for very long, um, and so it's just we now figured out that we can use it for art and artisan purposes, like woodworking. Okay, um, it's amazing. All, yeah, so it's it's been it's been here for a while. Thank you so much for that insightful history uh, into the product. So that was really interesting. So, Lou, if anybody. Uh, is looking to get hold of you online, where can they find you? Um, Melanie, before I go, um, before I give you that information, um, yeah. there is one more thing that I would like to just share with uh, your audience. Absolutely. And that is a topic, uh, a topic that is uh, very much debated, but also very uh, important um, yeah. when you do resin crafts. Um, and that is, um, you know, is resin in actual your back food safe okay mm. so because resin is a chemical um re resin is highly poisonous and toxic when it's in a liquid state um so when you work with it okay so you should in actual fact use your ppe um that we you know that needs to be uh, worn um because your body can in actual fact have some adverse effects and reactions to resin um it is really like gluten intolerance um some people can can eat a lot of resin. Uh, sorry, gluten. <laughs> resin. Um, and others will will uh, be very highly affected by gluten. Okay, um, the same with resin. Um, okay. We, uh, when I started my journey, I would get a skin irritation from fingertip to elbow when I get in touch with liquid resin. Okay, over okay. time, my body got used to it. Um, my workshop manager, however. Um, he started doing resin and never had any issues. And so that okay. is the point that we always make to our customers 
is bear in mind it's a chemical and that it is toxic. Okay. Now, when your resin is cured in a rock solid hard state, um, it, it is not supposed to leak any toxins out on you. And so it should, suppose it should be okay to um, do it in touch with. Okay. Safe. However, um, in the formulation process, um, many manufacturers like getting the resin thinner or um, um, the resin. Okay. These chemicals can dynamize properly in the in and that leaks out toxin. So it's very important that you find a FDA compliant or certified resin and you do food items like cups and cheese boards and even for our Thank you. Um, again, it's very important that you find a, um, a resin that is food safe, um, especially FDA compliant um, or certified. Um, even for dining room tables, um, we, you know, accidents always happen. You might set your child at the table. Um, when you turn around and go back, you see that he or she spilled the food on the table and ate the food from the table. So, you know, you don't want to get uh, people potentially poisoned. Um, so it's always important to check for a food safe resin, um, as well as pigment powders that you, uh, the colorings that we include in resin. Um, some colorings are cheap imported uh, products from China and might in actual fact um, have harmful chemicals like rat poison and lead in it. So it looks like we've lost Lou. Um, yes, um, like I said, it's important to get that food safe resin. Um, I will end off with, uh, with our uh, official color code model and core value. And that is uh, one, we only provide products that is food safe um, as well as colored pigments. Um, because we have a responsibility to our clients, but also to, you know, the, you know, the people that our clients, you know, do provide their products to. Um, and so our, we do have a saying uh, for our core value, and this is what we teach our clients, is keep resin out of the body as far as possible, um, because we've seen a lot of strange items on the market um, that was intended to be used in the body. Um, and so even though you have a food safe resin, um, food safe resins normally comes with restrictions, like for instance, um, our resin is restric restricted to, to, um, to exposure of temperature. Um, so if you, in actual fact, um, do put a piece of uh, something on it that uh, that is higher than uh, you know hotter than 50 degrees Celsius, then there's the risk that it might leak toxins. So all resins, even food safe resins, will have restri restrictions. And so the, our motto is keep it out of the body as far as possible. Um, don't make a baby spoon and feed your child with it. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I'll end up with the story, um, especially the pigments, also Melanie. Um, uh, pigments can often also not crystallize properly um, because of the consistency. So, uh, you know, it sits at the bottom of an item and it stays sticky. Um, and so that might in actual fact also cause uh, toxins to leak out when you get your food exposed. Um, I'll end up with a story. Um, I have a, uh, a friend artist that has too many schnauzers. Uh, now, so that you guys know, I'm a schnauzer lover. I have three of them. Um, and uh, she says she, one day she <laughs> left a packet of white pigments on her desk and she went about her day doing other things. Um, next moment, the, the two minis uh, ran through the house with white noses and they seemed so uh, hyperactive that it seemed like they were sniffing cocaine. Um, okay. And so, yeah, and so um, 
She says she immediately had a heart attack because what did they get themselves into? Is it poisonous? And will this be, uh, you know, can it kill them or make them sick? So she went through the house looking and the last thing she thought at looking for is the, the pigment powder that she left on her desk. And she says she found a torn open on the ground and, um, and half of it wasn't, wasn't there anymore. So it's, um, and so we emphasize that food safe products is, uh, you know, non-toxic food safe products is, um, is crucial because accidents do happen very easily. And if in fact that wasn't a food safe uh, pigment, then that would have been at least a trip to the vet Mm. or potentially she might have lost her fur, her fur babies mm. um, and so it is really crucial to go for that um, mm. and yes yeah, so we also always provide uh, products that is food safe okay okay that's really useful information thank you so much Lou, for sharing thank you uh, so much such useful information with us so if anybody would like to contact you directly to buy resin from you where can they do that um, Melanie, we function best uh, through our uh, Facebook page. All the information of all our products as well as our up and coming classes is always on the Facebook page. Um, and you also can con contact us directly through um, the message button uh, on Facebook Messenger. However, um, we also function mostly on via email. Um, so we do contact um, you know, if we are in contact with you, it will most probably be via email. And so you can find us at Color Co. Um, SA on Facebook and then also info at colorco.coza um, is our email page. Um, okay. On the Facebook page, you will find telephone numbers if you need to contact us uh, okay. directly. With, you know, it needs to us. Okay, fantastic. But I, will I then also want to Sorry, sorry, Marilyn. Uh, with that, I also want to, um, sorry, uh, want to invite anybody that has technical questions with regards to resin. Um, if you're not sure, I am always available um, for a phone call to give you some uh, some advice. Um, and uh, rather, rather quick a call instead of, uh, you know, making making a flop. Um, so I'm always available for technical advice. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that generous offer, Lou. I think uh, very often when you're overwhelmed with information, it can be so nice to just phone somebody and speak to somebody that you trust. So thank you very much for that. Sorry. Okay, so um, I've really enjoyed chatting with you and uh, I will include your contact information in the description to this video when I upload it. So thank you for your time today, Lou, and thank I look forward much, to Lee. speaking to you again another time. And thank you.